Pinar del Rio, Cuba, Abe Flores opened his PDR cigar factory in the Dominican Republic over 10 years ago. Abe is one of the hottest boutique cigar makers in the industry today, earning the number 10 spot on Cigar Aficionado's Top 25 Cigars of 2014 with the Abe Flores 1975 Siri Pravada. Abe and his team use Cuban blending traditions in a modern boutique Dominican factory. Smoke PDR cigars and cut, light, and taste what they love to do. Welcome back, everyone, to the Stogie Geek Show. I want to remind everyone, this is our four-year anniversary, and more importantly, go to CigarRights.org. Sign up today, renew your membership, or sign up for a membership if you're not already a member. Use the ambassador code 0159, and Will will send you a free cigar. Yep, and it's, if you sign up for a new uh, membership, you'll get two free cigars, but whether you sign up or renew... I will match that cigar. Just send proof to the show at stogiegeeks.com. Very important because we want these shows like this to continue, not just for us, but for everyone who's doing these types of shows. Absolutely. Yep. We have on the lines via Skype, Victor Vitali. Welcome, Victor, back to the show. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. Before we start, our boy, Crook. Okay, I got to meet this guy today. Crook's on the set. I Kruk, heard. Crook is on the premises, and he gifted me uh, or Vivo Genius, European edition. There we go. That's his favorite. You know, oh, he, I know. And he, but he, he actually parted with those, um, which is very – I mean, I'm just – it was thrilled to me that he came down here, and I know he's a, he's a big fan of yours. So I want to give him a shout-out right off the bat. He's a big fan of cigars. I mean, actually, I, I'm going to retract that and say that over. Kruk is a big fan of tobacco. Yeah, he I – mean, He loves cigars. He loves pipes. But all sorts of pipe tobacco. I mean, the guy is like a new, uh, he has a newfound passion for pipe tobacco. And, and he knows his stuff. He keeps me honest. If I have something and he says it's wrong, he will he will call me. And, and most of the time, he's in fact, probably he's right almost all the time. So um, I got to give him the credit. So He is. He, has, uh, he certainly has a big passion for cigars and yep. tobacco, that's for sure. Now, Victor, last time we were talking about Tortuga, which is one of your brands, um, have there been the recent line extensions to that uh, brand? Is that correct? Well, it really depends on when the last time we talked about it was. Uh, last year. Was, Might have been last year, yeah. yeah. Last year, we, well, since then, we introduced the Connecticut would be the most yes. recent version. And I think uh, Will did um, a, uh, a rating and review on his site about that. And I think you guys have already talked about, or we have talked about, the, the uh, uh, Brazilian Matafina Maduro, the El Coyote Negro. I, I believe we talked about that last year on the show, yep. right? Excellent. So how's the Connecticut uh, been selling for you? The Connecticut, to my surprise, has been fantastic. And, you know, as you guys know uh, from uh, from us talking about it before, I was cautiously optimistic about going to market with the Connecticut because my uh, consumers or the followers of Portuga really have grown to expect uh, a medium plus uh, a type of of cigar, because all three versions prior to the Connecticut were more of uh, medium, medium plus, really borderlining that full body segment of the market. And what I wanted for the Connecticut is, uh, I guess in in today's uh, industry, is to be unique and really go towards the classic side of Connecticut, which is uh, mild. Uh, from 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 what I've smoked on all of the recent releases of Connecticut Shade from the other companies, is they kind of really dial it up towards medium body, whereas I went the other way and dialed it as far as I could towards mild, without it being boring. Yeah, and I I you know I, you know me Victor, I love that that style smoke uh, first thing in the morning. I think more cigar smokers should. Uh, gravitate towards Connecticut's, especially uh, first thing in the morning. Or if you're taking a break from smoking, going back to a Connecticut as your first cigar, if you've taken a couple days off or whatever from smoking uh, or longer, and you want to go back and have that that mild uh, smoke, manufacturers like yourselves are making mild smokes that still have flavor. I think the, the... the mild smoke's got a bad rap. Connecticut wrapper's got a bad rap. I think we've completely turned the tables. There's a lot more smokes on the market, like the Tortuga, that have Connecticut offerings that are absolutely fantastic. It's way dialed back in strength, but like you said, Victor, it still has that flavor. 
And that's that's what I love. First thing in the morning with coffee, that's yeah. it's it's great. It's great. Yeah, you know, if you, Connecticut is a really versatile wrapper. I mean, you could you could really put it on almost anything. And the Connecticut part of the cigar is going to be good, right? For you know, without stretching this too much further. But really, there is there is an abundance of mild tobacco out there. Because let's face it, I mean, more than fifty percent of the plant is going to be milder tobacco and you could really mess up a Connecticut shade blend and it could really it could be uh, too earthy too salty too acidic uh, too aromatic there's really if you don't get the blend right to really marry and work together properly you could really end up with a really bad well I mean you guys probably smoked a lot of really yeah, bad Yeah, no, that's interesting. Cigars Victor, I, yeah, I've, <laughs> thinking about it that way, that's, it brings up an interesting point. When we talk about sweet, salty, sour, bitter, yeah. if the wrapper is really light like that, um, balancing the other components of the blend is more difficult. And that's what a lot of people say of blending Connecticut is very difficult. It's the hardest part. I mean, you know, especially, uh, I mean, look, you, you could really get, how do I put this? You know, I, I, without being offensive to what other people do, I mean, if, Again, if the water table is too high, you know, there's an abundance of crop and it's, you know, it's cheap, you know, you get this real sour tasting. You know, another another common trait of a mild cigar is sour. Mm. And sour is just due from, you know, the water table just gets too high for a season. There's too much rain and you know, just get this really abundantly sour tasting tobacco. And, you know, I think that's why a lot of guys who enjoy cigars like we do, which is more on the medium scale... When they go and try a Connecticut shade, they're not liking it because it's just sour and, and uh, bland tasting. So, really, what I would encourage is, uh, like you said, to really smoke a uh, Connecticut shade cigar on a rested palate, but uh, also try to find the right one and not just completely alienate it from your lineup. Because, I mean, I, I really enjoy smoking Connecticut shade. And me personally, sometimes I enjoy smoking a Connecticut shade at the end of the day. After smoking many mm -hmm. uh, fuller body cigars, because it kind of has that like uh, palate cleansing effect to it. You know, right. the one thing about that Connecticut that surprised me is in the Regio size, which is a seven and a half by fifty-six. I've had very few Connecticut's perform well in the longer, fatter ring gauge, and that cigar, in my opinion, we call it on Stogie Geeks the Bell of the Ball. It's the best of the three. So whatever you did with that. With that bigger size, it worked for me, is what I could say. Well, I'm happy to hear that. Thank you for the compliment. Yeah. The, you know, the folks at the factory, Juan Carlos Aguilar, is uh, uh, mostly responsible for that. I mean, he uh, he has a hundred years of, of history in, in uh, tobacco processing and uh, blending department, and uh, he uh, he gives me a lot of help on what I do. Victor, with the Tortuga. And we, Paul and I, yesterday, we were smoking, we did a segment where we were smoking some Peritos. And we were talking about how, you know, you take, when a blend is made, then you take the blend, and sometimes there'll be a different wrapper put on it. And I know you started out with the original Tortuga Reserva, which was the Nicaraguan Habano, and then you went to the Brazilian Matafina, and now you've had the Connecticut. But I know from our discussions, one thing you did is you just didn't put that wrapper on that cigar. Um, and, and say, I got another cigar. You had to work to kind of tweak those blends to some extent, um, I guess at different levels. Um, can you talk a little about that? Yeah, sure. Um, really, with the exception of the box press line. So the box press line, the blend is the same in all four sizes. But when you move into the Cetero series, there's three sizes in the Cetero series that are completely different. So. The Cedro number no. five, Cedro number no. ten, and Cedro Bellicoso, the blends are different. And against what the common direction of the industry is for brands, they typically blend the same within a series of uh, style in, under their brand. I really went a different route because even by offering different sizes within the Cedro series, I really wanted to tweak the blend where it was noticeably different. Not just noticeably different by size, you know, when you smoke something, you say, hey, the Corona tastes a little bit different than the Toro, which tastes a little bit different than the larger ring, which could be a Churchill. In this case, it's a fatter Toro. Um, but really, when you smoke the three, you're going to notice a substantial difference between the three. 
and the same went for the Coyote Negro as well. The Connecticut Shade is going to be the same too, so I should have really put that in the beginning of, of uh, the statement where the box press and the Connecticut Shade are really uh, dialed to be very similar within the size range. But to answer your question more directly, I, I just when I come out with something new, I just don't change the wrapper and use the existing blend, although that would be the most cost-effective way to do it because really the, the, the blend and uh, the binder part of the uh, uh, cigar is really where you're buying more tobacco and you're buying less wrapper, obviously. So the most cost-effective way to do it would be to just change the wrapper and go to market with three or four new sizes, but that's not what I chose to do. I don't, I don't have anything else for Victor off the top of my head. Sorry, I just totally... Well, I want to talk about your costume, man. I mean, that's you really... You like my uh, pimp that's, costume, that's, huh? that's real pimping. That's right. It, you know what, dude? This thing is so comfortable. It's so... I mean, it's almost like as comfortable as Tom Brady in the pocket throwing touchdown patches to Gronk. I mean... Well, if we get, if we, yeah, there you go. Oh, there geez. you go. Very nice. Very but nice. Supporting America's team. America's uh, team that lost to... the. America's real team. And last team. time I checked, well, four was greater than two. And yeah, that's well, you have four how many Super, Bowl. Super Bowls Giants have four, we Giants have four Super Bowls. Just, uh, in, in, the, in the past 15 yeah. years, though, yeah. still four is greater than two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> little friendly rivalry Will and I have. <laughs> you know, we need another Giants-Patriots Super Bowl TV. because we will have the ratings through the roof. Is is all I will say. Victor, are you are you working on any uh, new blends or something new that you're coming out with? Uh, tell us about yeah, the Yeah, uh, I'm really always working on new stuff. I actually have, I mean, so much test stuff over here that uh, I'm I'm really been resting my palate because this I'm always calling things up from the factory and uh, working on different styles and just playing with as much. Uh, tobacco as we possibly can and, and just trying to be unique and different and really satisfy uh, our user at the end of the day and offer them something unique and rich and, and really cool to try for the next season. So um, blends are always in the works. Uh, sizes, I'm really working on perfecting the Perfecto size, which I'd like to release by uh, April of this coming year. The worst case scenario would be the IPCPR in Las Vegas, but uh, I'm really in no rush for that. So uh, really, I would be really happy if it was April, but if it ended up being uh, July, that would be okay too for me. Excellent. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I want to kind of just touch back on Oro Vivo. Uh, that's the project for folks who don't know. You've you've collaborated with uh, film star Armand Desante, and that's kind of been. I would say more of a limited release, per se. You've done several iterations. I'm smoking the European edition right now, which um, I'm just a big fan of. How How is that project going, and could we expect to see some more from Armand? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, Armand, uh, with his busy schedule, uh, uh, continues to be a wonderful cigar advocate for all of us, and he tries to work as many cigar smoking scenes into movies and television shows as he possibly can. And uh, he has uh, a pure passion for premium cigars and even for the industry. He, uh, he's been to uh, two trade shows so far out of, uh, out of three, and uh, he plans to come back uh, to Las Vegas this year, which, uh, as we all can cross our fingers and hope we get a, a really good turnout for. Uh, New Orleans not being the greatest destination uh, for our industry. But uh, aside from that, uh, I'm also working on a couple of things there. And as you said, we went through uh, three uh, different styles. The original style was made for the American market. It came in the black box in larger ring gauge sizes, uh, a 16 count box. And then the European version was in the white box, which is what you're smoking, which also came in four different sizes which were uh, not as large as the American version. And then uh, at the trade show uh, last year, not trade show this year, it just passed, we introduced the World Edition, which was really a combination of both the American version and the European version, and that has sold out as well. So we're doing uh, more of a limited release in different versions, 
Uh, that really seems to pique Armand's interest and, and the folks that like Armand and like the Aura Vivo. Uh, from what we keep hearing from uh, the website and comments on the website and on Facebook that they're really looking forward to uh, what we're working on next. I, I never asked this question to you about the Aura Vivo and I, I wanted to ask it. The band design, very classic, very different though. Could you talk a little about that band design? Yeah, sure. Uh, Armand is uh, pretty much responsible for being the in inspiration for the band design. He um, he really wanted a uh, a multi-attractive label, something that wasn't overly masculine but yet not overly feminine, uh, because he he really feels like cigars really shouldn't be slanted towards one gender. He he's been to you know numerous functions. Uh, across the globe and he travels on a regular basis. I mean the guy is just constantly on an airplane and constantly in other countries and Hey he said, Victor, I, I got a question yeah. for you about Armand. I was recently watching sure. uh, some old episodes of NCIS and he actually played a pretty major role uh, in 2007 on NCIS. Do you remember what his character's name was on that show? Uh, you, know, I, you know, unfortunately, I don't watch uh, NCIS, uh, let alone have cable. I'm kind of uh, kind of out of the loop there. So, uh, unfortunately, yeah, his I character was La Grenouille. That was his his character. He played uh, an arms dealer. It was actually pretty good. It was a pretty good role. Yeah. I don't know if he smoked any cigars during that during that role. I didn't I didn't notice that he was he might have been smoking a cigar during that during that role. But I thought of you in the you know the cigar brand when I when I saw him on there. So it was pretty cool. But you had well, a, you had to see Paradise Alley. Oh, of course I did. I yeah. mean that's just Stallone. You know what a what a great movie. Shot. I could be wrong. I think that was his first movie. It was he a was very early. Yeah, early. Yeah, it was a very early yeah, movie. Nineteen nineteen seventy eight. Yep, that was right after Rocky, and I remember when I saw that for the first time, and I was very young. I was eleven, but I really even at eleven years old, that movie kind of gripped me a bit. Um, I wasn't supposed to see it. I think. Uh, <laughs> I think my, we had uh, we had the predecessor to Cable and. My dad had it on, so uh, but a very good movie though about Hell's Kitchen. Just growing up in Hell's Kitchen. Yeah, you know, but you know, in terms of um, is Armand the kind of guy like who smokes? All, I mean, does he smoke his own cigars, or does he kind of does he like to smoke a lot of other people's cigars? Uh, Armand, really, he's the type of guy. He's just uh, you now. You've met Armand. Yes. Armand really, he's a very humble guy. Oh. If you give him a cigar, he'll, if in an allowable setting, he'll light it up and smoke it with you. And, and he's he's just the type of guy that's just so willing to hang out and smoke cigars pretty much under any circumstance. And he smokes everything from, you know, you got to imagine, I mean, people gift him cigars all the time because they know he loves cigars. So, I mean, he has, I've been to his house and he has humidors almost in every room of his house. And. They're all always filled to the top. And every time I go there, you know, because I know what's in there, and it, it, there's never the same cigars in there. So, and, you know, so he, people are constantly giving him cigars, and he's constantly smoking cigars. So I've seen him smoke everything from Cuban cigars to pretty much everything out of Central America and the Dominican Republic. He's not really partial to any one thing. Um, I do know that he likes medium to medium plus cigars, but not specifically not overly full body cigars. Now you were telling me, I think when we were just talking at IPC, did he take some of the cigars to one of his movies? He took some of the Oro Vivos somewhere, right? I'm yeah, actually, uh, we we have a whole bunch of Oro Vivos in reserve for him. Basically, every time he travels somewhere, he's always asking for a couple of boxes of cigars so he can share them with the folks on set. Um, he's, he's had cigars with uh, De Niro, Jack Nicholson. Uh, I mean, you, you pretty much name it, and he's, uh, he's had cigars with almost everyone that you can imagine in Hollywood. Uh, Frank Mancuso. Um, you know, I, you've got to get him on the show one day. I know, you know, we were talking about doing something in November. I'm still waiting to hear... Typically, what will probably happen is uh, I'll probably know like a week or two weeks ahead of time, and I'll just give you the call. And, uh, I mean, it would be really fun for both you guys and him. I mean, it would be nice for him to, you know, go down memory lane and just tell you who he's had cigars with in the past and, you know, what the conversation was about. I think that would be a really cool interview. 
So, uh, so basically, Crux gonna. You need probably... to get that. No, I was trying to turn it up. <laughs> Cru Cru I was trying to turn it up. Crux basically gonna be finding out where those Oro Vivos are. By the way, I think he just ran out the other side of the studio. So. Oh yeah, did his, did his radar go off? He's like, oh, what? Yeah, I mean, fantastic. I mean, fantastic cigar. Um, here, um, like I said, just um, this. You know, like I said, have you? I noticed cigars done well, and, and you don't, you're not in a lot of retail shops, but I'm sure you've heard from the retailers, I want more of these. H how have you resisted the temptation to basically not do it? Is it a tobacco limitation, or is it just something that you've decided it was going to be, you just want to do a short run of it and be done? Well, really, it's, it is a tobacco limitation, and Armand just doesn't want to rush through this. I mean, he's purely interested in creating a legacy with the Oro Vivo brand and he's not looking to line his pockets with profit um, uh, you know from the sale of the brand so really like you said uh, we're in a limited number of retailers you know, we call them authorized uh, merchants and uh, you know between Tortuga and Oro Vivo there's a little over 200 retailers across the United States and it has very limited access to online you won't really find it at the bigger houses online uh, but our authorized merchants will have it uh, on their site, and uh, they do. They they look for it. They ask for it all the time. When's the next one coming out? And uh, you know, the majority of them are looking for it uh, for for July, which is when the next uh, or if you go back to do. Excellent, excellent. So, uh, Victor, my final question: the perfecto size that you mentioned, you're going to do the Oro Vivo in a perfecto size? No, that's going to be just Tortuga. Okay, gotcha. I wanted to clarify that. Well, Victor, thank you very much for appearing on our show, helping us um, celebrate our four-year anniversary and support. Happy anniversary. Our, thank you. Support. More importantly, support the Cigar Rights of America, cigarrights.org. Make sure you go there, renew yep. your membership, or sign up for one if you don't already have one. So. Yeah, we appreciate it. And like I said, uh, we, it was a busy day, but we'll certainly have, you know, you're always welcome back. So thank you very much for everything. Thank you. Thanks, Victor. Thank you. Thank Stay you. in the line. I got one thing I want to talk to you about before you go, sure. after we cut. So we'll All be right, right back.